Guys, welcome to episode number 10 of the Derby Criminal Life, and to start off this episode, we are currently second in the table. Just seen this on the right hand side, I didn't realise, like, players get to do, like, interviews with people. Not too sure what that's about, um, but it's, it's something new to the game, which is nice to see, of course. We haven't actually been doing many um, pre-game press conferences, I've just realised, like, I don't know if I've been accidentally missing them or something, but it doesn't seem to be affecting results too much since we are second in the table. Just quickly looking at this. Now, Marriott's not been scoring that many. Martin's on seven goals, Waggon's on seven goals. Um, I'm not too sure where, I think I just saw Marriott. There he is, on six goals. So he's not, he's only a goal behind Martin and Waggon, so he's not doing that badly. Then you go over to assists, and he's got 12 assists in 16 games. Josasun is second with eight in 16. So clearly, um, we're doing very well indeed. I may I may look, because a lot of our players are here. We've got Shinny, we've got Rooney, we've got Martin, we've got even Mason Bennett, even though he's only played two games, he got three assists. Um, so yeah, it's good to see that our players are performing quite nicely. Um, let me just have a, head over to the squad hub just to see what kind of um, overall attribute changes we've had. We've had a few decent ones, but also negative ones to some of the players that we haven't been using. Obviously, Keo um, and Davies are both uh, over 33, so they're going to start to drop in ratings. So it's kind of good to see that Rooney's not dropped in stats um, because he's been performing well. So may maybe it's working, but at the same time, um, his stats are dropping. He has, he has dropped a bit in reactions. He's dropped a bit in acceleration. Um, so maybe that's why he hasn't scored as many in recent games, but still still a very good player, of course, and will do for the next couple of seasons. Looking at the other end then, in terms of growth, uh, we'll just quickly go down here. So we've had a plus one to Max Lowe, plus one to Dwayne Holmes, plus one to Mason Bennett, uh, Jonathan Mitchell going up by one, Jack Marriott. Um, I'm surprised Marriott's not grown more in stats, really. Um, you would have probably expected him to be a bit higher with like 12 assists and 8 goals that's that's 20 contributions like that's that's probably just as many as Rooney so clearly he's doing well plus 2 for Bielik plus 2 for Bird uh, plus 2 for Jason Knight same with Dal Sibley up by 3 Bogle plus 4 and then uh, Van der Vorte up by 5 so he's done the best so far in terms of growth same with uh, Jaden Bogle in 2nd for plus 4 it's, it's good to see um, there's a few players that haven't grown as much as I would probably liked, like for example Sibley and um, Knight, I'd like I'd like a bit more. Same with Bird as well, just because by the time we get to the Premier League we need these players to be towards the 70 mark, because if I'm going to be playing them in the Premier League, um, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. But as you can see, I think I think overall dynamic potentials are pretty much working. Maybe Josasun could have grown in stats, but he has 28. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm quite happy with growth. So into the first game of the episode, then against QPR. Um, hopefully, we do well. I think they're down in about 13th, 14th, 18th. Um, so they're not doing very well at all. So we should be able to uh, easily win this game. I'm going to quickly check, though, where the next game against Man United is. Because obviously, um, yeah, I'm thinking of maybe playing a weaker team against QPR. I'm not going to lie. Because if we could win the Carabao Cup in the first season... Um, Technically, we should get Europa League football, but yeah, it'd be nice to beat Man United. It'd be, it'd be nice to have a strong team as well, so I do need to play a bit of a weaker team against QPR at home, so I'm not too fussed, of course. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go for a weaker team. I think we're going to have to make changes anyway due to fitness, so yeah, we'll see when we get into the game. Here we are then at Pride Park against QPR, obviously team that we did uh, play a very long time ago at Wembley and unfortunately lost in the last minute. So in goal they have got Kelly, Ball, Matteson, uh, Jeff Cameron, then Lee Wallace. I think that is at left back. Uh, Owens and Matthew Smith in the midfield. I see Samuel and uh, Shodibo at uh, left wing. Then they've got Barber and uh, Mal Malakar up front. Interesting that they haven't got like Jordan Hugel or Naki Wells obviously. I think they're probably better than their current striker. We've gone for the uh, Diamond, of course, Bielik and Clark in the defence, then uh, Wisdom and Malone at fullback, Sibley in the midfield with George Evans, who hasn't played too many games, but uh, should do well in this one, then Shinny, Dow, Martin and uh, Mario up top. Ball into the boxes, unmarked with the shot and into the back of the net, I think that is Ursa Samuel, the right midfielder, I'm not too sure, um, but yeah, I think what I did is I moved George Evans and basically 
yeah, just gave him an absolute world of space to uh, put it into the back of the net there. It is um, Shodipo, the left winger, instead of uh, Sam Wilkin, I thought it was. But, uh, yeah, not the best of starts. What we tend to do is go d go down like one or two goals and then uh, manage to bring it back. I don't know if it's just the mentality of the computer. Like, basically, they'll, they'll see the games winning well and then they'll just drop back. But... Uh, yeah, we should we should be able to get back into it. We've got a chance here with Marit, but was intercepted. Evans with the ball into Dow, laid off for Shinny. Chance to get himself into the box, and now with the shot, underside of the crosswalk, hits the post, and the Scottish um, player has scored a nice little goal there. It's, it's really nice though. He's just got a bit of quality, and he's got about four star weak foot as well, so he's he's very good. Um, I'm not too sure if he'll grow any more in stats, but that's a nice little goal there from a tight angle to get us back into the game. He has got the captain's armband for today without any Rooney. Thought I'd just rest him up for the uh, big game next. Attack here for QPR. It's gone across the face of goal and into the back of the net. I think that is. Jordan Hugelo did say at the start of the game should be starting and uh, clearly has got them back into the lead there. Um, yeah, what I did is I brought, I, I basically thought I want to rest up Matt Clark for the next game against Man United. So I brought on Buchan at centre-back and uh, maybe it wasn't the best of decisions, but we have got Josasun on the pitch as well now who can always create a chance. Chance here for QPR to make it three. It's gone into the back post with the header and into the back of the net. It's just poor and I think that's going to be the full-time result, which I'm not I'm not that bothered. I'm not going to lie. I'm not that bothered about it, especially when we're second or top of the league or something. Um, I don't mind dropping points if it means we've got a fully fit team for the next game against Man United. Down on the edge of the box here into George Thorne who I've brought off off the bench and it's into Chris Martin and into the back of the net there's one back from the man himself Chris Martin I haven't really played George Thorne that much but I just felt like he should technically be at Oxford United he did uh, get injured the other night against uh, West Ham so yeah I just felt it wasn't quite right playing with him and we have actually sold him um, for the next transfer window but I thought since we're just you know, using a few different players, I thought I'd give him a run out. Just assume with the ball out wide here. Has obviously got all the pace in the world to try and create a chance for us and get us the equaliser. He has run with the ball for a while now. Into Chris Martin with the shot. Handball's not on, but obviously clearly came off the QPR's hand there. Just assume with the ball here. It's a pretty high line from QPR as well if we can get around this last defender, Jeff Cameron here. He's put the slide tackle in, he's missed it. Can he pull it back now for Dow? With the shot and into the back of the net, we have equalised after being 3-1 down. Kieran Dow with the goal. He's, he's nice, he's, he's got the he's got a bit of quality to him. He's, he's not physically very good, but um, shooting and passing wise, very good indeed and uh, gets us back level. Oh, defence is nowhere to be seen. Hugo with the shot and Hugo. Has he just scored a hat-trick after being subbed on? And if QPR scored in the last minute of the game? Yeah, that just didn't, didn't, didn't go well at all. Like, my two centre-backs, I think playing Buchanan has shot me right in the foot. I think I should have just kept Clark on. Maybe he's a bit tough for the next game, but that's, that's definitely cost us this game, which is a shame. And there we go, full-time against QPR. Heel Gill. As I said, I, pff, my my fault. I shouldn't. Three shots, three goals. I shouldn't have said anything. It was an error for the first goal um, from the free kick. She needed well to get us back into it, but we did really well to get back. And then just in the last attack of the game, losing it against QPR. Hopefully, um, it pays off though with me resting players. Hopefully, we uh, get a good result against Man United. A bit of an update then from the youth squad. I'm going to re release this Rossi guy at 44 rated. Um, I might just reject anyone under 50, to be honest. I just don't see him ever playing, especially at left back. I've just got far too many. Um, Moretti will leave for the time being with 94 top end potential. That's pretty good indeed. What I can always do with these players is, is actually loan them out. So that's that's one thing I could look at. I think if I sign this guy now, the Ferrari, since he's the only available one. Player chat here from Tom Huddleston. Didn't even play you. 
but again, it seems to be glitched. One thing we could do is load out Buchanan, um, since I just don't really seem getting that much game time. Knight's done well though, to be fair. Uh, ten appearances for him, nine for Sibley, eight for Bird. I'm quite surprised we've only played eight games with Max Bird, and so for, like if you look at the overall average rating at 7.3, that's very good indeed. So. Definitely going to uh, be keeping him in the team. I'll just have a quick look and see who the top... It's actually Shinny and Josasoon have got the most appearances. I'm quite surprised that obviously we just sub on Josasoon every game. Uh, Shinny's got all the stamina in the world. Um, with the thing was with um, Rooney was, we didn't play him for a couple of games at the start of the season, but 16 goals and 3 assists in 17 games is absolutely fantastic. Same with Marriott. Um, what's that? 18 contributions in 17 games. Jane Bogle as well, getting a lot of appearances. Uh, same with Van der Vorte. Doing well. Like uh, uh, Three clean sheets isn't amazing. Um, but at 17 years old, at 68 rated, if I can just keep growing him and get him ready for the Premier League, then that's great. So, we have a little old game here against uh, Man United in the quarter-final of the Carabao Cup. So, let's head into that game. Shouldn't be any excuses since we did rest the team up um, for this game. I'm kind of tempted to go why is small or oh, this is where we're gonna have issues because of where when I started the career mode not all transferred had been completed so Smalling should be at Roma um, I think we'll go for our blue kit since we are in an away game um, I'm gonna put Wagon in from the start we'll bring on Martin off the bench I think um, I think I'll also since we are playing against a very tough team, we will go for Tom Huddleston and Curtis Davis into the team. Just a bit of um, authority, of course. Hopefully, I'm thinking maybe Malone at left back as well, but he is a little bit low since we did play him in that last game. Um, we'll drop a couple of players that are a bit low as well on fitness. Here we are at Old Trafford against Manchester United, our biggest game of the career mode so far. If you remember this time, well, not this time this year, we did play uh, Man United in the Carabao Cup, so uh, no Harry Wilson on the free kicks, but as you can see, Wayne Rooney leading the lineup against his old club. Um, unfortunately, because of the squad updates when we did it, um, it, like, look at who's left in the cup, though. We've got Newcastle, Bournemouth, Watford, West Brom, Sheffield United and Crystal Palace. So if we win this game... I don't want to say this is the cup final, but this is the toughest team left in the competition. So this is a very, very good chance to get silverware in our first season, of course. Um, it does look like a strong Manchester United team. Let's have a quick look and see at their lineup. They've gone for the 4-2-3-1. David De Gea in goal. Dallo and uh, Small in Twanzebe and Mitchell. Mitchell at left back isn't exactly fantastic. Same with uh, Twanzebe, but like it's, it's the cup game, so you're going to get a bit of rotation. Lucas Lever and McTominay in the holder midfield roles. Then uh, Mason Greenwood. Barlow, never heard of Barlow. I've heard of Mitchell and uh, Greenwood, but I've never heard of Barlow on the left wing. Um, Lingard and Rashford up top. It's, you know, it's it's probably, it's a better team than ours. There's no doubt that, about that. They've got Rashford and Lingard. Obviously, we've got Rooney and Shinny. <laughs> Curtis Davis, Tom Huddleston. There's, there's good players in our team, but uh, I think Man United just about edge it. But if we can get some attacks down the right hand side with Bogle um, then we have a chance Rooney on the ball then against his old club can he he hasn't been great recently but can he get us a good performance in this game Marriott with the ball here going to cut inside onto his left foot now with the shot and into the back of the net Jack Marriott with the early early goal against the big rivals Man United that is exactly what we needed that's just going to give us a nice, it's not going to make us as nervous you know, defending's not going to be as bad Paul defending from small in the twin Zobie. and um, as he did in real life this time last year, Jack Marriott has got a goal, Shinny on the ball here bringing it forwards I'm not too sure what kind of pace he's got but he does seem like, quite nippy it's into Waggle now, slip through for Marriott can he get a second, David Hayho having to make the save Rooney wins the ball here, into Marriott, can he turn the man, yes he can, with the finesse shot into the near post, and maybe, maybe the sliders need to be tougher, but then again we lost the last game against QPR, so I don't know if it's just, I don't know, I don't know what's, I don't know what to do really, it's, it's, it's a decent goal, but I just feel, I don't know, 
it's well it's well placed but I don't know if like the computer could do better there uh, but we're 2-0 off against Manchester United I'm not going to complain Jack Marriott with the second he could potentially get a hat-trick this game um, within the first 20 minutes Lingard on the edge of the box here against his former club sips it through for Rashford and it is a good save from Van der Voort very good indeed Rooney's there with the ball can he burst his way through he's, he's obviously not got the pace he once had at Old Trafford but uh, it's on to Waghorn back to Rooney now into Waghorn again can he go around Twanzebe yes he can now with the shot saved by De Gea and it's Wayne Rooney against his old club I'm not too sure how you I, I went for the no celebration because he wouldn't he wouldn't celebrate if he scored against Man United but we are finding this very easy I don't know what I need to do I don't know though, because like we just lost for like we, QPR did really well in that last game. But against Man United, I'm finding it very easy, which is odd. Like they're not very good going forwards and uh, seem to be literally walking through their defence. Like on with the ball here, slips it through for Rooney. Goes around Mitchell with ease. Can he get his second in the game? Now with the shot, saved by De Gea. And Jack Marriott. Oh, I thought he had his hat trick, he's offside. Yeah, we're finding this. Very easy, which is a bit concerning. There's half time against Manchester United, and we are currently flying away. Literally, so easy against Manchester United. It seems like I'm playing against, I don't know, Bolton or something. It's, it's not Man United, that's for sure. Um, I just don't know what I can do with the sliders, really. I just don't know what I can. Because at the minute, like basically, like QPR for example, in the last game scored four goals. Hugo scored with every single shot on target. Like, I just don't know what I can do um, to get consistent results out of the computer, basically. Rooney with the ball here into Holmes. Now into Jack Marriott. Can he get himself his the hat trick in the start of the first half? It's hit the post. I've hit the crossbar and the post now with Marriott. Uh, it doesn't look like he wants to get that third goal. Rooney with the ball in. Go make some substitutions, then I'll bring on uh, Martin as we have to contractually do that every single game. Um, I almost feel like bringing on Max Bird or something or Jason Knight. Like it, it's that kind of game where the game's gone now. I'm pretty much certain we're going to get the win. It's just um, just resting up players, really. That's that's all we have to do at this point. See, Alexi Sanchez has just come on for Barlow, who should be at Inter Milan, but basically, um, it's not the end of the world really because those players are on loan anyway so by the time we get promoted to the Premier League it won't really affect us too much there's not many permanent transfers um, that have happened matter on the ball here out wide to Mitchell now inside to McTominay see there's a lot of numbers here forwards for Man United so there's still a chance for them to get back into it but Van de Vorte easily punches now for the chance for the counter just haven't quite got the pace on Marriott to break through. Have just done it there though. Past Twenzebi. Now with the shot. Saved by De Gea. We'll make my final sub of the game I think. Um, probably just rest Rooney. You know. Might him on the ball here. Into Marriott. Can I get him his hat trick? That's the question. Now with the shot. It hits the post again. He's, he could have had about five or six goals this game if he didn't keep hitting the post. But we have just... Subbed Rooney off and uh, brought Jozzy in for the last five minutes. And there we go, 3-0 against Manchester United. A very, very comfortable victory against one of the best teams in England. I think they could have put a stronger team out, but at the same time, I think we just did really well. I think because we rested up the team, it just meant that we could just literally roll over them. little message here from Tom Lawrence. Um, I'm definitely going to have to say something negative here um, there we go your demands are out of place <laughs> obviously he doesn't know what he's done in real life but uh, anyway with that loss against QPR we do move down to fourth in the table we're still seven points clear though of like technically eight points clear of the playoffs so there's lot you know I could I could probably cost I could probably afford as trying a harder difficulty on the sliders just to because like winning three 0 against Man United just shouldn't happen. I know we lost four three against QPR, um, but I just I just feel we we just need to do something. Basically, we need to make it um, a little bit harder. Also, I'm still waiting for an injury. 
I don't know if injuries are just broken on this game or something, but we just haven't had an injury so far on the career mode, so we've just literally had no... I know we regularly rotate on the team, but there has been no real... Um, hasn't been any real uh, injuries to anyone, so we'll just, we'll just fiddle with these just to uh, try and help um, make the game a little bit more harder for us, because it's just been quite easy. It's, it's not been very easy, but it's, it's been quite easy. Next game against Blackburn Rovers then. They do obviously have Bradley Johnson down in 20, uh, 11th with 28 points. Um, let's have a quick look and see who we do have in the next round of the Carabao Cup in the semi-final. Um, should be added in here. So we have got Bournemouth. So that's a very big game indeed. It's interesting to see where the FA Cup game goes. That's the only question. Oh, it's a two, two legs as well. Completely forgot that. Is it the two? Is the Carabao Cup semi-final a two-leg thing? I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know if it. Is it two legs? I don't think it should be, but it is. In my head, I don't see why it is a two-leg thing, but it is. So we'll just have to play it when it comes up. Obviously, we should get the FA Cup draw as well soon. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Um, in that area. So let's go into the game against Blackburn Rovers, a pretty decent team. We'll be using our uh, black kit for this game. I don't think we've actually used our home kit in this episode, but since we've got such nice away and third kits, there isn't really a need for it. So we will have to rest Tom Huddleston for this game, as you can see, just down in pretty much just over half stamina. Um, I do need to list Ferrari onto the loan list because I just... At 55 rated, I'd rather... I'd rather use Jason Knight. It's as simple as that. They're basically the same position. Um, and I'd rather use him. We've actually had a... Andre Wisdom has gone up. Same with George Thorne, even though they've only played one game. It's a bit odd, but that's that's FIFA at times. Um, I don't think we need to make any changes, really. Maybe, maybe we'll go for Malone in left-back, just for a bit of rotation. Nice to see Logo to a 71 as well. I do think should we play Rooney at striker, but like... I just feel Cam is probably where he should be because then we have to drop either Marriott or um, Waggon up front because obviously we've got Martin pretty much confirmed in every game. So we'll leave Rooney at Cam for the time being. We've gone for Bird in the midfield for uh, Huddleston, put Shitty back into CDM, Bielik in the centre back position, and Malone at left back. Looking at their team, then they've got Bradley Johnson in the holding midfield role, um, Luke Twiller in goal. Uh, Grayson and Platt, then Elliot Bennett and Cunningham at fullback positions, Ben Barretton, Travis, Bradley Dack, um, Adam Armstrong and uh, Samuel up top. It's a very good Blackburn team. They they are, you know, they've been around in the championship for a couple of seasons now and they've got some very nice players. See, this game feels more difficult than the Man United game, which is odd. Rooney's been taken down there by uh, Bradley Johnson, the, the old man. Um... The old Derby man, of course, with the yellow card there. Cunningham with the ball into the back post. It's back in the middle. Clark's not dealt with it. It's been saved. And with the ball into Marriott. Overlap of Scott Malone. Can he get us an attack here to end off the first half? He's going to pull it across the face of goal. Now into Chris Martin, into the back of the net. And we do make it 1-0 at the uh, stroke of half-time. Very good time to get a goal, of course. Um... I'd say Blackburn have been the better of the two sides since we have uh, changed the sliders slightly. Um, but overall, we've, we've still had a few chances, but as you can see, uh, Malone just bringing it forwards across the face of goal. Chris Martin there just to tap it in the open net to make it 1-0. Chance here for Blackburn on the edge of the box. Now with the shot and into the back of the net. As you can see, if you do give them a bit of space, the shot error uh, will mean they will basically put it into the top right-hand corner, which is what, what I want. I want them to be scoring goals. Um, that just didn't happen in the Man United game. As, as I, I could have done a bit better with Clark there. Um, but Dominic Samuel with the goal to make it one all. Ball into Marriott, now into Martin. Can he get a goal on his left foot? Now with the shot and into the back of the net. There's literally one minute and 30 seconds between the two goals. And Chris Martin gets his second of the game. It's good to see that he's good. Um, 
because obviously if I made that bet and he was bad and I'm just having to like carry this player along um, but he's definitely contributed he's got about nine goals now Martin with the ball here into Marriott now across to Rooney I, do, I, I just miss Rooney being able to score goals but he's got the finish shot off there very very good save from the keeper Rooney with the ball into Martin into Jozza soon now slips it through for Rooney got a score here he's hit the post now with the rebound into the back of the net Rooney with the goal it just I don't know it doesn't the first few games the first like 10-15 games with Rooney he was uh, above and beyond everyone else but now I don't know if it's because he is um, I don't know I just don't know like should, that that should be in that, that first shot should have been easily in but uh, took the rebound to get it into the back of the net I will sub him off now just to rest him up because I think that's a, another factor as well his stamina has gone down a little bit but it's still it's still pretty good and there we go, full time against Blackburn Rovers. We have won 3 1. Um, again, it wasn't the most difficult game in the world. It's it's so difficult to judge um, what kind of sliders we need. Scott Maloney did a decent game at left back. He's got a nice assist for us on the first goal. Obviously, Martin with a couple and Rooney getting one as well. Um, yeah, overall, like, I just feel. I don't want to make it too like so difficult that it's almost like a grind and it's not like fluid football. Um, but I definitely want it harder than this. After that win, we are on 20 games now. 40 points on the board and uh, only 4 losses in those 20. A lot of wins as well, that's, that's good to see. We haven't drawn a lot of games. Um, it's been quite decisive. So, yeah, we scored 50 goals and conceded 30, which... Like, if you compare it to everyone else in the league, if you can see 30 goals, you should be around there. But we have been scoring a lot of goals, so may maybe making the defensive side of the computer better. But then I don't I don't want games just to... I don't want to have, like, 1-0, 2-0 games. I want to still be able to win nice games, basically. So um, we'll put marking up a little bit. Also put goalkeeper ability up to 60. Why not? Um... Yeah, it's just, it's one of those things. You've got to be super careful with the sliders not to make them, like, silly, basically. We're going to go into a bit of training and change a couple. We'll change Bielik from, I think, uh, passing to probably defending, just to get those stats up a bit, since he is mainly playing centre-back. Um, I was also going to change somebody else. Bogle, we'll change Bogle's defensive stats um, to dribbling, I think, just to, just to get him a little bit better up and down on on the sides with the uh, assists and I think we'll probably go with that although we could do with maybe maybe changing bird I don't think there's another goalkeeper one that we can do for Van der Voort, which is a bit of a shame we could go for that but there's no point um, what I want is handling and positioning because they're the two positions that aren't the best but we'll, we'll just keep it for one on one against the strike for the time being. Um, a little bit of growth there to Sibley, Bird and Van der Voort, almost a 69 rated player. So I think we'll probably save that game for the next game. Sheffield Wednesday are currently in sixth. Uh, we have gone down to third now because obviously Fulham, Stoke and uh, all the teams around us has played an extra game. Um, let me see if the FA Cup games be. It's not quite being drawn yet, which I'm I was kind of hoping for because I, I kind of need to see. I'm guessing it's going to go on that Saturday, more than likely. Um, so yeah, I'll probably go there, the FA Cup game. Then we've got the Carabao Cup game. Um, so yeah, January is going to be very difficult. So may, maybe looking to do a bit of business now is what we should be doing. We'll have a quick look and see um, if his contract's been extended on Jared Bowen. We also got the scout reports back for. Olmo, Halland, um, this guy, Dominique. Um, I think we looked at those in the last episode, though, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we did. We did look at those. Um, we have also added a few Ajax players here. We got Schurz. Somebody suggested him. Looks quite good, 20 years old. Um, I kind of prefer the like the look of this guy, though, with five star weak foot at centre back. That is just so brilliant. I'm not going to lie. Like, especially that he can play CDM as well. Um, it would probably cost us around 10 million to get him, though. Um, we also have Triore here, valued at a million, and I have a release clause as well. We'll get the scout report back and see 
what he's like. Um, but yeah, we, we're overall in a very good position. Like we have got a few players that we can um, use as bargaining chips. Basically, we can use Keo, Bennett, and Lawrence all as bargaining chips uh, for the next window. But maybe selling them because I feel when you do a swap deal, you don't get the best value for money. Um, Scott Carson has just gone down in a rating. Um, but I feel maybe adding him to the transfer list is what I should do. Because I'm going to get more money if I do that. Because what is he worth at the minute? He's worth four points. So we could probably get about five or six million for him. Realistically. Um, which might be what I should probably do. For some reason I can't. So we'll add um, Mason Bennett for sure. We'll add him to the um, transfer list. Obviously, he's not going to be playing anymore. Um, and I think we add Tom Lawrence as well. We will for the time being anyway. I kind of prefer to sign Jared Bowen on a pre-contract than having to sign him on a permanent, if that makes any sense. Because if you look at the, at the minute, um, if I was going to buy him, it's going to cost me like 8 million, which is just a bit too much for a 75 rate of play. I know he's got a very good potential and um, will do well, but if I can get him on a free at the end of the season, I'd probably prefer that. I don't know if I can see if his contract's been extended yet or not. So yeah, as you can see, he's only got seven months left in his contract, so I'd rather, because especially since we're not really playing with wingers at the minute, that may change when we go to the Premier League, but I think for the time being... Um, I think we can get him on a pre-contract anyway, so we'll leave him there for the time being. Um, and yeah, let me let me know in the comment section down below, because the next episode, um, by the time I record... So I'll record the next episode, obviously, and that'll go up to Wigan. Um, and then after that, we'll be in the January transfer window, and I'll have to be making signings. So let me know now if I should be signing any players. I think going forwards, I'm... That's why I'm kind of not wanting to sign Bowen right now because we, I think going forwards we're scoring a bag full of goals. It's just defensively we need to do a bit better as as I can show you on the uh, table. We've scored 50 goals, which is 10 more. Yeah, we scored 10 more goals than any other team in the league. Um, but defensively we've conceded 30. So I just I, f I feel we, we we basically need to show up the defence because if if we concede the 30 goals we'd be like down in what 20th. <laughs> so you know we're, we're doing well we're we're playing quite open, um, but maybe just having a better centre back or I think it's it's only centre back really because of Keo. Um, who I will also add to the transfer list in between the two episodes. So yeah. Just let me know. I'm, <laughs> we're doing well. Like I, I, I'm not going to complain with what we've got at the minute. It's just a matter of can we can we sign someone for next season more than this season? Maybe I'll look at uh, other players that are expiring in their contracts. So hopefully, guys, did enjoy this episode. We got through to the semi-final now of the Carabao Cup. Uh, let me know of any signings and uh, yeah, leave a like right if you did enjoy. And see you soon. Bye.